Um, hello everyone, very nice um, to have you join this uh, uh, online webinar which we prepared for teachers and uh, uh, inclusion in education educators uh, on how to work with films um, on inclusion. Uh, it is organized by the British Council in cooperation with the Athens International Children's Film Festival in the frame of the Erasmus Plus funded in school program. This is uh, in cooperation with seven partner organizations across uh, Europe. Among them, uh, Asamblea Cooperación por la Paz, which is in Spain, SCODEC, Scottish Development Education Center in Scotland, um, Expedition Inside Culture in Poland, the Lifelong Learning Platform in Belgium, OBESO, which is the Student Unions Association um, in Europe, uh, also based in Belgium, and the Institute of Education Policy in Greece. Um, uh, the project uh, aims to embed inclusive uh, education methodologies for schools around Europe and um, it is uh, trying to favour the emergence of a community of inclusive educators made of school leaders, teachers and students. It's been one year and two months that we're running the project. We've got 65 associate organisations and schools uh, cooperating with us and so far we have 500 trainers, teachers, headmasters and school advisors trained in the methodology of the project and 2,000 students reached directly. This is, um, uh, the, the, you can find more information on, the, uh, on our website which is inclusiveschools.net and uh, you can also find very valuable education material on how to work on inclusion in your schools. So Inclusion Week, what is Inclusion Week? It is a, a campaign that we thought to, um, to launch in the midst of these uh, challenging times for every school community in Europe. Um, it was initially thought to, to take place face-to-face uh, -face in schools uh, by uh, facilitating the um, um, workshops and projects with uh, teachers and students in every school. Um, but we decided to, uh, of course, shift it online by giving uh, valuable tools on how to work with students um, in such circumstances. Uh, uh, currently. So in cooperation with the Athens Children Film Festival, we're organizing these webinars and they have selected the films and they have prepared the educational kit that will um, uh, be sent to you after the webinar. Um, indeed, um, in, on the technical side of things, this is going to last for an hour and a half. Um, we will be finished by 6.30 uh, Central European time, which means 7.30 for Greece and uh, 5.30 for the UK. Um, and whenever you'd like to um, uh, contribute with a comment or to ask something, please raise your hand. There will be um, interactive, let's say, uh, sessions within the presentation. Uh, so, uh, be your guest and raise your hands. While talking, as the presenter, which is, uh, uh, who is Kaliopi Haralambus from the Athens Children Film Festival and Katia Papaspiliopoulos, they will, uh, it would be advisable or in, we would encourage you to um, have your camera on so that they can see you as well and we can make it more uh, Approximate, let's say, um, despite the conditions. So, thank you all. I am Irene Careta. I am the project manager of the project and uh, uh, working for the British Council on EU projects. Um, and I will pass the word to uh, Kaliope, who is the director of the Athens Children Film Festival. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure uh, to have you on uh, this session. We are the Athens International Children's Film Festival. We select international films from dozens of countries and we're dedicated to children, the families, students, educators, and of course, film lovers. We, um, every year we reach over 7,000 students uh, during our school screenings and our, our, our 
programmers, they, they pick whatever is new, the best new animation and live action films from across the globe for ages 3 to 18. Our main goal is to create a community of educators, parents and students who are going to be actively involved into the film experience. And when it comes to film education, our job is to share the media literacy tools and make them accessible in the classroom so that young people become equipped to analyze and critically engage with media. And of course, our job is to support educators to strengthen the classroom learning. Uh, why we focus so much on film education, we as a festival, we focus so much on film education. Why talk um, about, why we use film education to talk about inclusion? Let me take a step back and explain a little bit about the framework of the film education. I find this table that you will see on the screen, on your screen, very helpful. It has been um, a group of, of 25 academics, film educators and practitioners um, led by the BFI created this framework that you see on your screens in order to support film educators across Europe in designing and managing and also evaluating our film education programs. As you, you, you may see, there are three dimensions uh, when it comes to, 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 to film education, the, the critical, the cultural and the creative. Today we're going to focus on the critical. Let me just give you, um, uh, share with you a few words um, for each dimension. So when we talk about the critical, we mean comprehension of films. Being critical means being active, being an active uh, viewer. Um, we communicate with a filmmaker, we communicate it with, with a group. Um, when it comes to cultural, um, the idea is to develop film culture. We want to encourage children and students to develop the ability of choosing and comparing films. Um, each, each film helps us learn a little bit more about our culture, our identity, our history, but also other cultures and other identities, other histories. And the creative, which is a very important aspect, of course, is to make films and practice. And making a film is always the best way to fully understand the form and the process. As I said already, we're going to focus on the critical dimension. Um, what is critical awareness and why? Um, what do our, uh, what do our uh, students learn? Um, with film education, they learn to express themselves, they learn to discuss emotional reactions, they learn to ask questions or to support their opinions, their ideas. They also identify with the themes and whatever is happening during the film. They uh, distinguish between different uh, genres, different cinematic techniques, and also they distinguish between reality and fiction, especially in a time like this when media and visual media is all, all around them. Um, going uh, uh, going further, I would like to share with you the um, idea and why, as a festival, we focus on on short films. Um, of course, practical reasons. They're short, and it's easier to screen them. Uh, it takes less time. Nevertheless, they are complete narratives. They have a beginning a middle and an end. And of course, uh, um, short films are usually unknown. The, the, those type, the, the short films are unknown to the, our students. Most probably they haven't seen the, the titles that we are going to screen, that we usually screen for them. And they can include all themes and ideas and cinematic techniques, pretty much like feature films. So I, we find them uh, very useful uh, when working with, um, with film education. Um, before we start the screening, I would just have to, I would like to share two tips. Um, always keep in mind, uh, before you start your film analysis session, keep in mind that form and content are completely linked together and cannot be separated. Um, and also, the second tip is try to structure your session in a way that there's a before, a during and an after. Before the screening, share information and sharing, um, create an introduction about the film, the filmmaker, the genre, the type of film. Um, during the screening, 
Um, if you have the time and if it's possible, allow several screenings. Work with them um, with uh, specific excerpts from the, from, from the film. Um, and also after the film, you can work and practice on, on practical activities like the ones we're going to practice today um, in groups or in pairs or with a whole classroom. So I will pass uh, the word to Ms. Apiak Papas Biliopoulos, who is the, the, the director of uh, our educational programs at the Athens International Children's Film Festival. And she is going to give you the introduction of the film that we are going to watch. Thank you, Calliope. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we'll watch the film, but before we will start our film session talking about before watching the film. So the film that we are going to watch, the title is Hello Salam. The country is from the Netherlands. Uh, 2017, 15 minutes. It's a documentary. The director is Kim Brands. Uh, we have various languages and we have a small plot that you can read and the themes. So I leave you a minute to read it and after you may watch the film now. Uh, we will send you the link uh, to see to watch the film and the film is 15 minutes. So we'll be back in this webinar in 17 minutes. OK.
So it is already um, 34 past five. I believe we have all our participants back. Everyone is back. OK. So, so we can, yeah, we can continue with the presentation. Okay. Thank you, Katya. I hope that uh, everyone enjoyed the film. Uh, we'll start now the film analysis session. Uh, we'll have to do this, we'll have a simulation of a classroom. I will be the teacher and for change you will be the students. So let's start. We start first uh, talking about the two categories of the of cinema, of work of, of art, of cinema. We have the narrative cinema or fiction. Um, the story is created by the, by the storyteller and includes of, or, all elements of a work of fiction. And we have, on the other hand, documentaries uh, that are a narrativization of moments from the real lives of uh, persons. So here, you know, everyone knows that uh, we have a documentary uh, which uh, presents an event from the lives of two children from Holland. So let's put together now as much information as we can have about uh, those two children. Uh, you will work, but I will make the start. I can say, for example, that they come from Holland and that uh, they are not brothers. Uh, does someone want to say something? Some information about them? What do we know about the two children in the film? Exactly. Anyone? Any other? Any information? Who wants to start? Anyone in the classroom? The students are not participating. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, Teren. Uh, okay. Please, Teren. You can tell us. Yes, uh, Teren. They seem privileged and yes. they are going to schools. They have normalized lives, mm -hmm. for example. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Someone else? Teren? No, I can say that, uh, for example, Seal, one of the two children, wants to become a policeman. What else? As they said. <laughs> um, ben, the question is, uh, what do we know about these two children uh, participating, being the protagonists of the film? What can we gather as information? They have um, caring, engaged and possibly middle class parent or parents who have been to the camp before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank Their you. Their mothers, yes. They are doing voluntary work at the camp. <clears throat> exactly. What else? They're well kept, they're well dressed. Mm -hmm. They look looked after, they look well fed. They looked well off in comparison to the children they went to visit. <laughs> OK. Uh, OK, so in fact, that, yeah, as, as, as as there is someone like else. To, so, yeah, yeah, okay. there is, uh, there is uh, Teren wants to add something. OK. Oh, no problem, it was just to increase the participation. They have some prejudices. They think that in the camp they will treat them bad, like mm -hmm. what kids do. So, mm -hmm. But it's not so much you are already trying to uh, analyze what they are feeling or what they want to, what, how they feel in the camp. I was just asking about practical information. Do we have other practical information about them? Okay, they are blonde. <laughs> okay, 
<laughs> I, I mean, physical definition of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Someone else? Can we move on? Okay. So, in Seems fact, like, yeah. uh, we don't learn so much about them. We don't know any, many things about them. So, what is this documentary about? Is it about those two boys or is it so, something else? Can you, do you, would, would you like to answer to one of those questions? What is this film really about? What is the main idea or thesis of the filmmaker? What does she want to show in this film, the director? Anyone would like to um, respond to that? I think it's about the process of the formation of friendship. Mm -hmm. The process of the formation of friendship we've had from Ben. Yes. What else? What would uh, the film, what, what does the director want to um, talk about? Because there is a difference between what he shows and he follows those two boys, but what is the theme? Maybe Anyone? to help us if there is someone, there is, is there someone else? No? No, no, no one okay. is raising hands. So mm -hmm. maybe to help us, we can <coughs> focus on the beginning of the film. Do you remember the first scene is, is uh, with uh, the opening tides take place in the airport during their departure. The, uh, after we have this photo of, uh, of the scene, uh, we see the two kids at bedtime. They are talking about their worries. And they say, the one, uh, one is saying, I wonder what the kids there will be like and if we'll make friends. And the other one, I think that first they will play trick on us. That's what kids are like. After we have, we are in the airplane. Uh, probably they are coming from Athens, they go to Lesbos. Uh, they're looking out the window and the filmmaker chooses to give us some direct information or exposition, as we call it. It's the only moment of exposition in the entire, in, in the entire documentary. And there, she, she's writing a text on the screen. Seal and Merlin were told stories about the refugees in Lesbos by their mothers. They now want to see it from themselves and meet the children on the camp. So, what is she saying about the main theme of this documentary? Does someone want to talk? Anyone wants to uh, answer or... what Katya? Yeah. I mean, uh, any any ideas of why why the director might be choosing to give this exposition, to give this information on the um, uh, uh, in the middle of the film, and it's the only time she he does yes, it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And she's her message to us, to the audience. So the, if some we no have one? we have ah, yes okay. we have we have someone we have Teren, please uh, Teren okay. yes you're welcome uh, yeah I think um, you know this first of all I mean maybe I will mix and please stop me if I as I did uh, go so fast when yes. I saw in in the, the beginning of the documentary I thought they were going to camp like in in a in the summertime with their friends, with their own yeah. friends. And then um, with these titles that the director puts, uh, we understand that the documentary will show from the eyes of the kids um, that they want to see. So uh, I think it's focus on the perspective uh, of the, the, the kids' perspective, no? Mm -hmm. I mean, with the 
it connects it connects with the talk that they are having i mean the privileged kids will travel to a refugee camp and they are worried you know it yeah. sounds like oxymoron no why you they have to be worried <laughs> no but at the end they are also kids and they have their own worries like they maybe they will be excluded they will be different from mm -hmm. them uh, and i think it gives this double uh, camera the double focus on the documentary yes thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, the main theme, uh, it's about the meeting, the encounter between those kids uh, that chooses to, they, they choose to go within their holidays in a camp, in a refugee camp. And it's their encounter with the children of the camp. Um, if we are uh, talking about the word encounter, the etymology of the word is from the Latin in contra, meaning in and against, meaning uh, meeting as an adversary. That reveals our framework for discussing two different entities meeting. Why the aspect of confrontation has faded somewhat from the contemporary meaning of this word, it remains fitting for the particularly difficult encounter of this film, in the sense of a union and finding a common ground uh, between such different entities and with those two entities and different children. The filmmaker wants to explore this encounter between the two children and the children of the camp. The camera follows the two children, but, but mainly tries to document the stages of this encounter. So now, to follow this idea of uh, this encounter as a main theme, um, can you tell, or uh, write down, but you can tell it, uh, what the kid from Holland and the kid from the camp have in common? and what their differences are. So what do they have in common? What do the children have in anything, common? Anything, yes, anything you want to say as a difference or as a common ground. Anyone? I start to believe that you didn't watch the film. <laughs> <laughs> And we uh, and we chose to to show it now so that everyone would have the same impression like uh, uh, right after watching it. Ah, we have Alkisti. Um, she wants to uh, okay. speak, please, Alkisti. Okay, hello. Um, they have the same age. They like the same things. They yes. the biscuit. Um, I guess they like to play and to see from the ball somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's pretty much what the film shows. Uh, you can make more deductions, but that's what comes to mind now. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Alkistis. Anyone else? I'm also, I'm also reading Ben's uh, comments. He says they have, what they have in common is play, hunger, home, friends. Mm -hmm. And Athena also wrote uh, they have friends. They have friends. So, yes. Okay. Let's, so friends. Is, let's see. Uh, I tried to gather as much information I, as I could uh, watching the film. So differences, of course, uh, the country, the language, the taste for sugar, uh, their home, school, life in the camp, and the common ground. You said it ages, understanding of English, the taste for tea and biscuits, playing, playing with snowball fights, but also rock, paper, scissors, what they want to do when they grow up. They have a very interesting discussion and it's a common ground. Love from them, their homes, love for their friends, you said it, and also uh, feelings and friendship. You said it. So, 
uh, we can see with this uh, small exercise that people can have differences, but they always have more in common, even if it's not that obvious at first. So now uh, you can, we can have an activity that is uh, very different in the classroom, but we will try to do it here. Uh, you will take a, pa a piece of paper, as I do now, and you will write the word yes. You see? Okay. I will uh, read okay. some. Sorry. Yes. So, uh, Katya, yes, please go on. I'm um, I'm only uh, encouraging minute, everyone. Minute, I will, yes, I will take out the the shared screens to see everybody. Um, I will read some statements. Each time you consider that uh, uh, a state the statement applies to you, that you feel that you can identify, uh, uh, you will show the yes paper. Okay. Um, for example, uh, That's, yeah. we, just, a, yes. just a minute, I'd like to, to flag that uh, I would encourage everyone to yes. um, turn yes. on their cameras if, mm -hmm. if they want, of course. If um, they want other, to play. Otherwise, if they don't have this possibility, um, they can write on the chat right uh, next to the, um, uh, right next to the, uh, to our, uh, let's say, speakers column. Um, there is, we mm -hmm. have, yeah, it's better to, to turn their camera on uh, if, if they have this possibility. Seren wants to say something, please. Uh, sir, it is just about logistics. Chat is not available for me and I don't have cam. Maybe there are some people cannot write in the chat, just for your information. Okay. Right, let's, okay. Uh, let's, let's proceed with the ones we have. Okay. Thank you. So, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, I have long hair. I like chocolate. Mm. I live or I have lived in a city. I like to dance. Ooh, yes. I feel or I have felt lonely. I have a pet. I am in love. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I, I believe in God. Uh, I have been hurt by a friend. Uh, now, does someone want to take my place for a minute, only for a minute? and make his own statement who wants to do it anyone to raise hands anyone who wants to take Katya's place in uh, um, uh, stating something like make make a statement for the others to uh, interact with to identify or not anyone no questions come in mind Ah, Ben. <laughs> ben, please. I am enjoying lockdown. <laughs> no, uh, no, not yes anymore. No. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Very good one. <laughs> uh huh. There are some people that do. <laughs> Apparently. Some, someone else. Oh. Anyone else would I have, like to? I, yep. I I have missed my friends during lockdown. 
Yes. And I have one. I have watched many films during lockdown. <laughs> Aha, not that many. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, so let's get back <laughs> to the circle. Uh, can you tell me now uh, um, how did you feel uh, doing this exercise? I felt like I know a little bit about some of the people in this group. Yes. And we we feel that we are becoming a group. And uh, some, someone maybe else has, a circle. has to say something as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, Sylvie? Yes, uh, it's me. Yes. I felt that um, we have something, some things in common. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Okay, so um, I will. So this activity encourages a discussion on whether society tries to put us in boxes and under labels, and sometimes we are very. Uh, we feel weird in this exercise because that categorization tells us that our differences should divide us into groups of us and them ignoring the important thing that we have in what we have in common so of course uh, this exercise uh, you you will see in the educational kit uh, how to do it in the classroom uh, like step in or step out of a circle and uh, it must take place in silence and with respect to everyone inside and outside the circle and of course you will choose the statements uh, depending on your student and on what you want to work on so now let's talk about a different subject and a very important one for uh, uh, this film. It's what is a refugee? This documentary uh, is filmed in 2018 at a refugee camp in Lesbos, a Greek island of the coast of Turkey. It's, uh, you, you can see it maybe in the map. Since 2015, uh, over one million uh, of people arrived on several Greek islands and the main reason is that the eastern maritime borders of Greece are also the borders of Europe. So, we, we have to talk about the, what is a refugee. Why do these children live uh, with their family in a refugee camp? Um, do some uh, does someone want to answer to this question of another question of the list uh, you can see on the presentation like do you remember which countries they came yes. to us what has happened in their country um, why did they come to greece how did they come to greece have you ever heard the words refugee and migrant what can you tell about those words and how are the living conditions in the camp? So let me just remind everyone that this is a simulation of a classroom. So these are possible questions that you as educators can ask your students after watching the film. Of course, for us grown-ups, it's, it's easier. <laughs> it's and we're easy. like, OK, uh, it's easy to just say, wh why are we asking these questions? But sometimes it's, it's, it's very, I find it very helpful to step into our students' uh, shoes and, and try and ask these simple questions. And um, so if, if anyone wants to just participate and like uh, reply to answer one of those questions, which is, it would just make you feel a little bit uh, the way your students feel uh, when you pose all these questions to them. 
and you have the chance of uh, be uh, 10 years old again. Right. A few minutes. It's not so bad. <laughs> Um, we have Ben's, um, uh, let's say, comment uh, that refugees are forced to leave their homes for reasons beyond their control and mm -hmm. to escape danger. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, uh, yeah, Algisti, we have, please tell uh, us. They come from Afghanistan, they come yes. from uh, uh, Syria, yes. uh, they have stayed in other countries uh, in the, on their way to Greece. They have stayed in Iran, a lot mm -hmm. of Afghanistan. Uh, Afghanistan. Uh, they came from Turkey to Greece to uh, the sea by boat. Um, the living conditions seem to be difficult, not so much at the time, uh, but not not great. They were cold uh, and crowded in the mm -hmm. uh, places. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alkisi. We also have Thank Athena you. saying that their country is at war. Mm -hmm. Their origin countries are at war, mm -hmm. the time being. Um, anyone else would like to answer one of the questions in our list? Okay. Or guess what would a 10-year-old say? <laughs> exactly. There's what your students would say. What would strike the most? We don't have any other okay. person, so we can continue. So, yes. let's go on. Uh, of course, to collect all this information uh, by asking questions, to your students can lead to a discussion about people who leave their, their country to look for a better life or to escape danger. Now, let's do another activity uh, linked to uh, the refugees. So, we, we have this final scene of the film with the group of uh, the children of the camp and the two boys. They are a group all together. We have not learned much about each person in particular, but we learn a lot about their encounter, as I said before, which, which is each other and, they share, and their shared experiences. So now I want you to imagine a story about one of the children that uh, Seal and Marilyn met at the camp, providing information about that child's life. So let's choose one of the, the children. We can choose, for example, Hamid. Can you, uh, do you look at him? Do you, you, do you see him on the photo? Okay. Yes. So, yes. I will ask you some question about him because we have to to try to imagine his life story. How old, how old is he? Would anyone guess or would like to say how old is he? So we have uh, well Ben and Sylvie saying yes. the same thing. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. Okay. Yes. So. I'm Hamid. I'm 11 years old. Country of origin? Maria, Country of origin? Would anyone? I, I come from Syria. I come from Syria. Uh, uh, how is my family? How many members? I have two sisters and three brothers. Mm -hmm. Sylvie says six. <laughs> ben okay. says six. Athena says eight. Okay. <laughs> um, how did he come? How, how did he come in Greece? How was this his journey to Greece? By boat, Sylvie says. Um, okay. On, but by boat, boat from, from where? On a boat from Turkey. Ben, Ben. So, uh, so first. My family, my family fled to uh, from from Syria to Turkey, and then 
we uh, we um, reached the Turkish border um, coastline and we uh, came to Lesbos mm -hmm. um, by boat. And maybe I stayed on a refugee camp in Turkey for uh, I don't know six months before be able to cross the border uh, by boat to come to Greece. Um, okay, and now what, what is he and his family, where, where did they want to go? Because usually they don't want to stay in Greece. Greece is the door to Europe, so they want to go in another country. Sylvie writes to Germany. To Germany, okay. Uh, does he have any relatives in Germany? His uncle. My, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So? Yes, um, yes, he is. Yes, yes my, my, my father's uh, brother, my uncle is, is there, so we want to join uh, my father's okay. family in Germany. So, and I haven't seen my father in, I don't know, two years, for example. Okay. Uh, does someone else uh, want to add something about uh, uh, Amit's life? And Amit's story? We've got some so, extra comments does, from... Yes from Athena, saying that uh, probably a family member, a brother, perhaps mm -hmm. an older brother could be in Germany already. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's been hungry from time to time, Sylvie says. Um, anyone else about how... What, what, are, uh, what, what dream he has? Does he has... So uh, I, I'm thinking that I would like to, to say that that for me, um, if if we need to speak in the first person, uh, yes. for us, uh, life is in, in the camp is, is difficult, and I would like to um, to go to, 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 to Europe as as as, as uh, soon as possible, and go to school there, and and uh, try to have a, a normal life. Mm -hmm. Sylvie says he wants to be a doctor. Athena says um, that he may be, is, his dream is to go back to his country mm -hmm. or to learn playing the guitar, Olivia says. <laughs> Great. We have a lot of things. Uh, I can see uh, now uh, the, the life story of Amid a little. Do you have something to add? No, okay. we have no. Mm -hmm. So, the goal here is to make the difficulties of refugees real and personal and grasp an idea of how they live. That's why it's very important to do it in the, at the, in the first person and to have someone, a photo of someone living. Now we are going to talk uh, a little about empathy and this very important human emotion. To help us, I want you uh, to uh, I want to draw your attention to these two scenes, and I I would like you to uh, discuss uh, what is taking place there. What do our two protagonists see and what are they thinking about in the first image? Can you remember? So this is a scene from the film and yes. uh, uh, we, the question is what, what are they thinking about the first image? Um, we have someone... You can describe talk. also it's the, the scene mm -hmm. and try to to see what are they thinking. Teren, please. Uh, yes, in the first image, uh, I remember when well, no, in the in the movie it was like shock. No, they, first mm -hmm. they were not understanding what was it, exactly. and more than the jackets, they were more focused on the boat that they were like 
too many people on it. So uh, I remember the feeling more than other thing was like shock. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Someone else? So they realize something there. They realize uh, the life of, uh, of the, their friends. I think, they, I think it becomes also very uh, obvious. It becomes visual. Like mm -hmm. Maybe they've heard stories from their parents or from their moms, but seeing those life jackets and those boats, I think it becomes more real. Of course. And it's symbols of this, this incredible thing. And it's really a shock. Uh, after, they're going back to the camp. It's the second image. And then, what are they talking about? But it's after this shock. And uh, Sylvie uh, makes a, a nice point about how um, these are symbols of life and death. Mm -hmm. uh, um, thanks, Sylvie. So what are they talking about in the second image? Anyone Do want you to remember? Me? What are they talking about? Olivia wants to talk. Thanks, Olivia. You can. Yes. Uh, they are reflecting uh, the discussion they had previously with uh, uh, the other guys uh, about mm -hmm. how to lose your house and they're wondering how they will feel if they were in their position on their feet. Mm -hmm. So this is what's about. Yes. Anyone else? Nope. Cut here, please. So, uh, I almost, I, I think, answered before to the third question. How are these two scenes connected? They realize something. They see the symbols of this incredible journey uh, their friends uh, uh, were, were passing through. And after this shock, they're completely into their shoes. They try to be at their place and to, to uh, feel what they are feeling. Do, By, do, they also, do they also at some point, I think, if I remember correctly, they, they're trying to think of uh, ways to help them. Is that, do I remember that correctly? Yes, and also they are talking about the, the incredible absurdity of uh, this system because they are saying, but they don't have a home. But if they are leaving the camp, they won't have any money to buy a new home. So it's with their child mind, they are trying to find solutions for them. So they are completely uh, in their place. And it's exactly what empathy is. Empathy is the capacity to understand or feel what another person is experiencing from within the frame of reference or the ability to understand and share another's emotional state or context by stepping into someone else's shoes. So let's do an activity called In Their Shoes. Let's be in the shoes of someone. Uh, I, I have to remember you that we are simulating the activity and now again you are 10 years old. So you can close your eyes and imagine a typical day in your life, an everyday, in your everyday life. You can answer, for example, what time do you wake up? What are, are you having for breakfast? Where do you go after you get ready? Uh, where, what activities are you doing uh, when you come back from school, etc., etc. You make a schedule 
of the things you do in a typical day, time to time. So, uh, does someone want to do it? Do you want to start? Again, in the first person. So, uh, when I, ha I go to school, when it's school day, I wake up every day at seven o'clock. My mother wakes me up and I'm having for she 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 takes me to have breakfast. She has prepared prepared already my breakfast. Usually it's uh, uh, milk, cereals, maybe an egg if I'm very hungry. And I'm living with my father and he brings me to school by car. Does someone want to continue? Anyone? What time do I get off school? How is my time in school? I stay at school until four o'clock. Do I like my teacher? Do I like my teacher? <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> Do I no have friends? No teacher answers that. Do I have friends yeah. in school? Many. Many. What do I play with my friends in the in the yard? Hide and seek. Yes. Hide and seek. Football. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can talk about my favorite subjects, my friends or a teacher I don't like. <laughs> um, Evgeny says yes. Okay. They taste I, me and I taste them. Yes. So I love, I love a lot with my friends. I'm having a good time. At school, I learn many things, even if I'm bored sometimes. And after, I, my mother is uh, taking me from school. And where do we go? Home. I have, um, I have after school activities. I mm -hmm. like to play soccer. Oh, I, yes. And that's my favorite after school activity. But my mother wants also to uh, to uh, for me to learn to play the piano. And uh, also I have to do uh, some English lessons or some, uh, I don't know, foreign other another foreign language. Etc, etc. OK, <laughs> so when you have done this, you can do it uh, time to time less, like a schedule. And now we can do the same for the child we were talking about before. Uh, I forgot his name. I'm a very bad teacher. <laughs> Hamid. 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 Uh -huh. So <laughs> what is the day the daily routine of Hamid. So we have to choose, of course, is it at the camp? Yes, let's do it at the camp. So I wake up uh, very early because we are living in, at, we are the 10 of us in a container. So it's very difficult for me to sleep anyway. The first who wakes up uh, wakes everyone else. Uh, they bring us some breakfast, so I don't choose. I eat what they offer me. What else? Who wants to continue? Sometimes we have um, uh, a teacher come in and do some 
work with us, do some um, English work with us. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes arts workshops. Right. Sometimes we. But most of the times I get bored. Hmm. <laughs> Sylvie <Because> says. <laughs> I can't go out of the camp. So sometimes I don't have anything to do. But I also and play with the other children in the camp. Of course. There are a lot of children. Of course. There's, there's no lights in, there's no windows in the building, so I spend most of my day outside. Mm -hmm. Even if it's very cold, I prefer to be outside. Hmm? Okay. So, so the idea is to show us, um, it, 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 is, is this is this an activity um, for the children to to be able to walk into uh, those children's shoes? Is this the purpose of this activity? Exactly, exactly. That we have to step into the child's shoes and think about the things they couldn't do, the things they would have to do differently, and how different their life in school, in their family, their safety their free time would be very different. So now, um, the two activities we did on the refugee and empathy are a great uh, jumping off point to start a discussion with your students about human rights and more specifically, the rights of her children. Uh, this convention on the rights of the child uh, was adopted in uh, 1989, uh, sorry, and it's the, really the most important document on children's rights. And it's really uh, an incredible tool uh, for uh, every film you are uh, you are organizing a film analysis because all the themes are in this convention and we can talk about the right of the child with every film you will do a, a film analysis session or a film education um, as uh, Irini said before uh, you will find more much more resources and material in the educational kit that you will receive tomorrow. Uh, I would like to thank you for uh, listening to me. I hope that it was useful for you and I hope that you will do it in your classroom. And now we can have some question or something we, you want to discuss, some, some remarks, anything you want. So anyone would like to ask something in particular or to make a comment or a remark regarding uh, the presentation of film analysis of the specific film? Yeah, um, it's Ben here. Just one question. Um, if I wanted to share that film with my students, is that link uh, live constantly? Exactly. So, um, yeah, I was about to comment on that. The film is available and uh, has subtitles for um, uh, other languages um, in English, in Spanish and Greek uh, until the 29th of May. So in, for the following 10 days, you can use it to um, to, to share with the, your students uh, and be able to work on it. Uh, but the methodology itself, uh, coming with the education pack, can help you work around films, short films, um, anyhow, like on how to structure it, the before, exactly. during and after. So these films are going to be online for the next 10 days and you have access in all the um, uh, respective countries, um, uh, Spain, Greece, the UK, Poland, um, Belgium, 
And uh, we encourage you actually to use this uh, in these times. It's a nice way to to convey messages uh, for inclusion, but also to talk with your students about when they will come back uh, at school or how they picture this. Um, you can also check the um, other two films. Uh, it's uh, In My Friend's Shoes um, and uh, Everybody Else is Taken. They're slightly for older ages, yes. but maybe some of you are uh, you have uh, students of older ages as well. Um, no, uh, 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 Eugenie asks whether we, you have the right to download them. Unfortunately not. This is uh, the whole idea. We have got uh, access rights uh, from directors uh, until the 29th of May. Um, no, after the 29th of May, it won't be available. Uh, it will not be open access. The film won't be open access. Um, so Athena is asking, how are we supposed to introduce the film in a multicultural classroom in which refugee students participate? It seems to me that there is no problem, but um, is there anything special we should focus on? I think uh, Katya has already mentioned I, that uh, yes. during the... Uh, uh, and during I have the... lived it. Also, oh, you have experienced it, yes, right? We have yes, experienced it. Because, I think. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, no, no. Go, and uh, I will talk about I, my experience. Uh, since since the main theme of this of this film, as Katya um, mentioned already, is the is the meeting, is the, the encounter, and it's the communication and what takes place. As Ben already said, the stages of uh, friendship, the uh, the way it is developed. Um, in a multicultural uh, classroom, the, the main focus is there. It, this is already happening. It's a reflection of what, what is happening in the classroom already. So I find this very, I, I find, I think it will be very interesting to work on this film with your, with your students since it's it's um, it's reflecting their reality as well. So maybe I should I wouldn't focus so much on traumatic experiences or on um, um, the refugee experience because this this is not the main point of of the film. This this work that we have done it's background work. It's work that you can do in your classroom. But basically, I would say focus on the main theme of the film. I, um, this, this is just my, my, my advice. We've seen it with Katya in a classroom like that. Uh, uh, make sure you focus on the meeting, on the encounter, on, on the things we have in common. Uh, remember that this is inclusion week and um, this, this webinar is all about inclusion and the idea is to focus on what Katya already said. What we have in common is far more than we, um, um, the, uh, the, than our differences. I'm sorry, I took too long answering that question. I'm sorry. Uh, it has happened to me because uh, uh, once uh, we were watching a film with different classes and a class came uh, with, uh, uh, we have in Greece uh, multicultural uh, class classes. Um, and they came to watch it, Yet, and at the end, when we were discussing the film, one teacher told me, uh, you know, we have a student who were at this camp, this particular camp, because it's not the, the biggest of uh, Lesbos, we have Moira, uh, and we have another camp, and it's in the, that camp. And I was really, me, I was really moved by this and I I didn't know how to so I, I came and I, I asked him if he wanted to talk about the camp and he said to me no I don't want to talk about the camp but I, I would really want to talk about the friendship of those two boys with the boys of the camp so it was about he wanted to talk about the theme about the friendship and he 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 wasn't so interested in talking about his own experience mm. that's 
That's interesting. That's sweet because yeah, many times we make let's say presumptions. Of course, we have to be very careful about child <clears throat> protection and how not to bring uh, forward trauma. And I assume this is uh, worrisome for many teachers. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we make presumptions about exactly. uh, how how what what a child mm. uh, might think. Um, and uh, yeah, well, I've I've experienced that also in in education contexts uh, yes. where we thought that uh, we wouldn't need we, we were very reluctant or skeptical to bring forward some issues. And but the children, the students, were so much into expressing themselves, and uh, as every every other child or adolescent. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I remind you all it's for the next 10 days that you can use the film online and you will receive the educational kit that goes with a specific film. It will soon be also uploaded on the specific site that you watched the film from and uh, on our inclusiveschools.net um, site of the project. Um, I'd like to thank you all. Uh, it was very nice to see that um, um, response uh, in these times of overwhelming information, actually. Um, I hope you will have the chance to work on these films and to take the methodology and adapt it to other contexts as well. Uh, I remind again to link it to the children of uh, to the um, rights of the children. Uh, according to the UN Convention, it's always very a very useful tool. So I'd like to thank you all. Thank you for joining, and uh, hopefully we will have also your feedback, maybe of uh, having used it with your students. Any highlights yes, or any it would be great. Uh, insights? That would be great. So thank you all. Have a nice afternoon. And thank you. Hope to see you again. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ben.